there you go pretty cool way to store your rods your fishing rods um, I actually made these for my nephew who loves to fish and yes he does have more than two rods in his arsenal but um, I designed them for a two foot truss you can use them on a 16 inch truss heck you can even put them on a wall this is my version of a fishing rod holder and I did it all with a long mill so stay tuned Hey everyone, before we get started with the project, I just have to say thank you to this week's sponsor, CNC Labs, the makers of the Long Mill Benchtop CNC, just like the one we use here in the shop every week. I love my mill, you will too. Go to their website, cnc.com, and order yours today. Now let's get back to our video. Okay, everyone. What I've done is I've cut the board to size and we're going to cut the holes out first for the rod holder. And the next board will cut out the name plates, the part that actually holds this rod holder to the ceiling or to the wall. So what we're going to do is, or what I've already done is, is I positioned this board on my long mill, squared it up. I have a, a reference point here. I've squared it up and I've nailed it in. Now I purposely um, set my nail set so that the nail sticks up a little bit so that I can pull it out. It's not going to be in the way, but it is going to hold this firm enough and flat enough. We're going to cut all the way through the board and we'll get started with that. Let's get to creating a fishing rod holder. This is kind of a fun project for me. So what we just did was I went to new model. Um, I'm going to make three sets of these. So we need a size of 25 wide and 24 high. So we're going to select our origin bottom left and click OK. So now the first thing we need to start out with is uh, an overall size because these are going to get, as you saw in the beginning, these are going to get attached to a ceiling or a wall. So we need to make the pieces. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool and you've seen me do this before in other videos. I'm going to make the 25 inches wide and I'm going to make it three and a half inches. And there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this down here at the zero point. So for the X axis, we're going to do 12.5 because that's half of 25. And then we're going to do 1.75 because that's half of three and a half. So there's our basic shape. So I'm going to create this and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the circle tool and I'm going to make a circle. Come back over to the diameter and make it two inches. Okay. And then we're going to make it at two and a half inches from the end, which is our X, Y goes back and forth, left to right. And we're going to center this in our piece at 1.75 click create the next thing we're going to do is we need to create a smaller circle so we're going to go back over here we're going to create another circle come back over to the diameter we're going to do a one inch diameter and it's going to be 1.75 right to the center we want to follow the center and we're going to do four and a half to the center. So now what we need to do is we need to create this little slot that comes up to the edge of the board. 
And how I'm going to do that is by using the rectangle tool. So let's do that. We'll go over here and do the width is going to be one inch and this is going to be 0.625. So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, I know this one was at four and a half to center so we're going to do five inches here. So now what we want to do is we want to create this as one part of our opening. Now we want to come over to the rectangle tool and we want to create another rectangle. The width is going to be 0.5 and the height is going to be 2. And we're only, it doesn't have to be perfect there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move this over. So we're going to do 5.25 and it's pretty close. And there we go. So now what we do is create and we can click off this and go over to now that we've created all this we can come over here and cut and we're going to cut this line here and this line here this one you see how that opened that up now we're going to cut this line we're leaving a flat spot here and we're good right here Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to array these. We want to copy these over here. I want a total of five of them. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select these particular shapes, come up here to the block tool, block and rotate copy. We need to have the gap between the pieces at a half inch. So this group, next group would be a half inch over we're going to create five columns and we're going to make one row so we should be able to just click apply there that's pretty simple we've done this before so now what we want to do is we're going to need to trim this so that these become part of the outline let's go to the trim tool and let's trim all these okay so now that takes care of that we'll go up here to the select tool and let's select all this now we're going to go to the block and rotate copy now this time we want to go up and down we want to go up we want our gap to be one point or 0.125 which is the thickness of my saw blade on my table saw so I want to create six of these we're gonna switch it around because we're going up and we want to be able to create six of these an eighth of an inch apart and as you can see that did not work oh no wonder we need to change this to 0.125 in the y direction the y direction is up and down now we hit apply and that gives us one two three four five six and it leaves us an eighth of an inch between so that I can cut these all off okay at the table saw and there you go that's all it was for the fishing rod holders and now we're gonna go to file new model everything here is gonna be the same so we're just gonna do that and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my rectangle tool and I'm going to create that rectangle again. Okay, let's create some text for this. So we're going to go to our text tool. Real simple. We're going to use Autumn. I'm going to keep the size at 1. 
I've already scale width this the size I want so we're just going to select so we're going to hit create so now what we're going to do is go to our transform tool and I'm going to change the width of it to 23 inches make sure you come down and hit apply okay we're going to change the origin to 12 and a half that's center and I'm going to change the Y origin to 2 inches and there we go so now what we need to do is I need to come up here and I need to select all of these and we're going to go to our array tool and we are going to create the same thing we did the last time it's already set up that's what I love about carve code I mean if you're doing multiple things it leaves your last settings there and there we go so now I have six created to match that is it for this one folks we just need to create the tool pass and I won't bore you with that okay Let's get started with the touch probe. That's usually where we do start. Do the X, the Y, and the Z. And then we'll put this away. Now, the only thing that I didn't show you all, like I said just a minute ago, was the tool pass. I usually record that and um, save it for you, but I did save all the tool path files. I did save the CarveCo file. And I will make those available to you. Just to e I'll put my email address in the comments below. If you just send me an email, I'd be happy to send you the files. In the future, we're hoping that we can make an opportunity for you all to go to a specific area, follow a link in the comments of each video, and download all the pertinent files that go with that video. Kind of make it easy for you and you know if it's something you want to redo or you want to edit or change by all means have at it that's what I did with this particular project it came out wonderful I'm very happy with it as you can see it's it took quite a while to carve because I did the clear out for these holes and it just took a while but um, it's the way I wanted to do it it made it a lot neater, a lot cleaner, a lot less sanding. As you can see, I'm taking it out right here. And it is really, really, um, very, come out very good. The bottom half, I need to sand a little bit. Um, all I really did was, is I took a router and a little chamfering bit and ran it over it and it took care of it. Now here's the other board I mounted in and I put the... Um, or a mask on and I will have a link to that below if you decide you want to try this or a mask it works great and it what it does is it masks off the rest of the wood so that I can paint the letters and I painted these um, uh, blue and then I polyurethaned it and put this thing all together so right now we're uh, Kind of, we cleaned up the dust, and that is it. Well, that about does it. Now, whether you fish or you don't fish, I'm sure you know someone who has a pile of fishing rods just itching to get up on the ceiling and out of the way, out of harm's way. So, a little bit of time in CarveCo, very little, simple program, and we created it all with our long mill. Folks, I've made quite a few projects this year with a long mill and I get so much satisfaction out of producing it start to finish using the long mill to make every facet of the project. Now yes, there's some sanding that has to be done, there's some fi fine tuning, but for the most part, you know, there's no reason why you can't mass produce with this particular machine. Whether you bought your long mill 
to make money or to make gifts. You got to admit it's a pretty versatile machine. So if it's something you want to do, please go to their website cnc.com and check out this great machine. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and go ahead and ring the bell so that you can get notified when we post another video. So until next time, be safe out there.